Morning people, welcome back to F Politics. Because we now have farmers protesting in Dover with their tractors, essentially against Brexit and the damage that it's doing to them, my question is, who's left? From the original 52% who voted for Brexit, who's left? And I don't even mean that in the, well, the majority has died in the years since. I mean that in the, even if everybody from 2016 was still here now, who from the Leave voting population still supports this? Because the pro-Brexit movement had different groups, and as far as I can tell, they've all come out against it since then. For example, the fishing industry, one of the huge champions of Brexit, set to lose 300 million pounds because of it by 2026, has been protesting since 2021. Then there's the Democratic Unionist Party in Northern Ireland. They worked with the Tories for years in order to get Brexit, and they shut down the government of Northern Ireland for two years in protest against it. Then there's the Brexit Party lot under Nigel Farage, now reform. Even before we left the EU, Nigel Farage condemned Boris Johnson's Brexit deal, saying, To get a second referendum on the deal which no one understands, mm. and staying in the EU. And I can see it. It's clear and and do you know what, it's, Colin? It's, it's, it's Colin, Remain wins that referendum and wins it every single time. And since we left the EU, one of the candidates for the Reform Party, which the Brexit Party has now become, actually tried to get the Supreme Court to officially declare that remaining in the EU would have been better than this Brexit. Boris Johnson himself, six months after he won the election, on the basis that his Brexit deal was the will of the people, actually came out and said he wanted to fix the Brexit deal because it was unfair. And now with the tweaks that Rishi Sunak has down to it, he's still attacking it. So that's Tories, the DUP, Nigel Farage's lot, the fishing industry, and now farming. And here's one of the farmers leading the protest speaking on the BBC. About 30 farmers drove their tractors as slowly as possible in protest against foreign imports of food. We're joined by the organiser of the protest, Jeff Gibson, a farmer in Kent. Morning to you, Jeff. All we're asking for is level playing fields. It's at the moment, it's just utterly soul destroying. You say all you're asking for, but that would mean rewriting trade deals, wouldn't it? Well, maybe those trade deals shouldn't have been put in place in the first... Uh, do you think it's got worse or better since Brexit? Um, Brexit has made things more difficult. Exporting goods from the UK is much more difficult and importing goods into doesn't seem to have changed. What he's talking about there is the fact that even though Brexit was sold as the UK needing to control its borders, we didn't. But the EU did control its borders, which is why UK exporters have had such a hard time exporting to the EU since Brexit. Meanwhile, we've done trade deals with countries like Australia, which is allowing foreign farmers to outcompete British ones, putting our farmers out of business, which the government itself is saying will cost 94 million pounds for the farming industry. Because Brexit has made it more expensive for UK farmers to export, but cheaper for foreign farmers to import so UK farmers can't compete. As UK farmers, we're very good at keeping quiet, talking in the pub, complaining about how bad things are, and we don't take action like the French farmers and the European farmers. And it just got to a point where voices need to be heard. Imports are coming in cheaper than we can produce it with that small of food miles. If you follow me elsewhere, you've probably heard me tell the story about the farmers that I met during the Stop Brexit campaign, who told me that they voted Brexit because they were thinking of this like, fortress Britain, where everybody was forced to buy British produce, because we'd have such high tariffs and high trade barriers with the rest of the world. The problem with that is, the kind of Brexit that people like Jacob Rees-Mogg was selling to people who weren't farmers was based on having no trade barriers at all, and bringing in all this cheap food that UK farmers wouldn't be able to compete with. And that's the heart of the Brexit con. They told people to vote against the status quo, but without specifying what the alternative would end up being. And now that we've got it, they don't like it. I'm Femi. Make sure you follow F Politics so politics doesn't F you. Have a great week.